السلام عليكم اول فيجكس كويشن نمبر 1 باي سايكلست ان ذا تور دي فرانس ريتشز افريج سبيد اوف 58 كيلومتر بير اور اون فلات سيكشن اوف ذا رود وات از ذا سبيد ان ميتر بير سيكند وي نيد تو سيلكت ون كاريكت اوبشن اوت اوف 5 جيفن تو اس ليتس سولف ات The average speed given to us is 58 km per hour. We need to find the speed in meter per second. We knew that 1 km is equal to 1000 meter and 1 minute is 60 second. So, 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes multiply 60 second which is 3600 seconds. So, 58 km per hour is equal to 58 times 1000 divided by 3600. On solving it, we have 16.1 meter per second. So, second option is the correct option. Question number second. A train is traveling on street track. The velocity of the train is 25 meter per second due north. One minute later, its velocity is 16 meter per second due north. What is the train's average acceleration? Determine both the magnitude and direction of average acceleration. And we have been provided with few options. Let's solve it. The given we have an initial velocity u of 25 meter per second final velocity v of 16 meter per second and the time one minute that is 60 second so using the formula average acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity and divided by time putting the values in the formula Average acceleration is equal to 16 minus initial velocity which is 25 and divided by 60 second. On solving, we got minus 0.15 meter second. So the magnitude is minus 0.15 meter per second and the direction is south. So we choose the option as 0.15 meter per second south. Question number three, a ball is thrown vertically upward, which is the positive direction. A little later, it returns to its point of release. The ball is in air for a total time of 2.1 seconds. What was its initial velocity? We need to neglect air resistance. And there are few options given to us. Let's solve it. Given time is 2.1 second. The final velocity, which is v, is 0. And initial velocity is u, which is to be finded out. So we use the formula. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times t. v is equal to u plus et. Rearranging the formula. Initial velocity is equal to final velocity minus at, acceleration times t. So, putting the values, final velocity is 0 minus acceleration is 9.8 times 2.1. Solving it, we got 20.6 meter per second. Question number 4. The initial velocity vector v has a magnitude of 3 meter per second and point 20 north of east while final velocity vector has a magnitude of 6 meter per second and the point 40 south of east find the magnitude and the direction of the change in velocity vector delta v which is vector subtraction of two vectors final velocity vector minus initial velocity vector 
we have been provided with five options. Let's solve it. Given the initial velocity is 3 meter per second at 30 degree north of east and final velocity is 6 meter at 40 south of east degree. So the present direction, complete direction is roundabout. Roundabout means complete circle which is 360 degree. So we will minus 360 minus 40 which comes out to be 320 north of east. Let's find out x and y component of velocity. x component of velocity and y component. Initial velocity is times cos theta. Velocity along x axis. Initial velocity times cos theta which is putting the value 3 times cos angle is 20. So 3 times cos 20 solving it it comes out to be 2.82 meter per second. Now the second point initial velocity along y axis which is initial velocity times sine angle which is 20 degree putting the value 3 times sine 20 degree which is 1.03 meter per second. Now, x and y component of velocity at the second point. Let's find it out. Velocity at the second point along x-axis is v2x which is vb second point times cos theta. Putting the values, vb is given to us as 6 meter. So, 6 times cos which is equal to minus 3.86 meter per second. Now the change in velocity v2 minus v1. What is the value of v2 we have? 4.6 minus 2.82 is i component plus for j component we have minus 3.86 minus 1.03 j component. So solving it 1.78i minus 4.89j that means i component is 1.78 and j component is 4.89 so the magnitude of velocity square root minus 4.89 which is equal to the velocity which is 5.2 meter per second so finding the direction, the angle which is theta, 10 inverse minus 4.89 divided by 1.78 which comes out to be 70 degree. Question number 5. When a parachute opens, the air exerts a large drag force on it. This upward force is initially greater than the weight of sky driver and therefore slows him down. The mass of sky diver is 82 kg and the drag force has a magnitude of 850 Newton. What are the magnitude and the direction of this acceleration? We need to find it out. We have been given with 5 options. Let's solve it. As in the given question, the upward force is greater than the dragging force and the mass of sky drive diver is 82 kg. Force which is 850 Newton and we need to find the acceleration. So we use the canoe formula F is equal to ma mass time acceleration or rearranging the formula acceleration is equal to force divided by mass put up the values 850 divided by 82 it comes out to be 10.4 meter per second square question number six 
A racing car moves at a constant speed of 215 km per hour around a curve. The radius of the turn in this oval racing track is 132 m. The centripetal force keeps the car on the curve. Determine the magnitude of centripetal acceleration of the racing car in this circular section of the racing track. There are a few options given to us. Let's solve it. The first part, the velocity which is given to us is 215 km per hour, converting it into meter per second. As 1 meter, 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter and 1 hour is 3600 second. So we need to find centripetal acceleration. Using the formula, centripetal acceleration is equal to square of velocity divided by the radius. A is equal to V square upon R. So as we have already converted the velocity in meter per second, which is 59.72 meter per second. So the centripetal acceleration A is equal to square of 59.72 divided by 132. It comes out to be 27.01 meter square per second. Or we can use 27.0 Question number 7 A person pulls a toboggan for a distance of 35 meter along the snow with a rope directed 32 above the snow 32 meter above the 32 above the snow the tension in the rope is 105 newton how much work is done on the toboggan by the tension force? For solving it, the tension force is given. That is 105 Newton. And the distance is 35 meter. We need to find work. We use the formula. Work is equal to force times displacement with cos theta. Angle. Cos angle. So put up the values. Work W is equal to force which is 105 times displacement which is 35 and cos 32. Solving it, it comes out to be 3116.5 joules or roughly this is 3117 joules. Question number 8. A water sky is being pulled out by a tow rope attached to a boat. As the driver pushes the throttle forward, the sky accelerates. A 72 kilogram water sky has an initial speed of 5.10 meter per second. Later, while moving along a straight line, the speed increases to 12.1 meter per second. Determine the work done by the net external force acting on the sky and we have been given with five options so let's solve it given the mass to us is 72 kilogram and initial velocity of 5.10 meter per second final velocity of 12.1 meter per second and we need to find out the work we use the formula work done is equal to change in kinetic energy which is half mv square half 1 upon 2 mass time velocity square so work done w is equal to 1 upon 2 m final velocity square minus initial velocity square and their difference putting up the values 1 upon 2 times 72 within bracket final velocity's value 12.1 square minus 5.10 square and solving it, it comes out to be 4,334 joules. And for kilojoule, we, we divide it by 1,000. Because 1 kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. It comes out to be 4.33 kilojoule. Question number 9. I spring 
is hung from a ceiling when a 0.450 kilogram block is attached to the free end of the spring and released from the rest the block drops 5 cm from momentarily coming to rest after which it moves back upward what is the spring constant of the spring for solving it mass is given to us as 0.450 kg we know that g acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square the formula used f force is equal to k x square where k is the spring constant and force we knew is equal to mg or which is mg is equal to kx square putting up the values 0.45 which is mass times 9.8 is equal to k we need to find out and x is given to us so x times 0.45 times 9.8 divided by 0.05 you can find out 88.2 newtons per meter and here comes question number 10 a tourist who weighs 805 newton is walking through the woods and crosses a small horizontal bridge the bridge rests on two concrete support one at each end he stops one fourth of the way along the bridge assume that the board of the bridge has negligible weight what is the magnitude of vertical force that a concrete supports exert on the bridge at the far end and we have been provided with few options let's solve it as we have been given with two force at the near and far end the force of 805 newton stops one fourth of the way let's assume one is l and one fourth means l divided by four let's apply an angular momentum theorem the first distance times zero minus the speed times l omega l upon four that means it becomes one upon four plus second times the times length which is equal to zero and solving it second times l is equal to omega l upon 4 on both sides l gets cancelled out so r2 is equal to omega upon 4 the value of omega we have 805 weight which is 201.25 newton so the vertical force is 201.25 newtons